reactions of glycolytic pathways are stage I, which is preparatory or conversion phase. This is a preparatory stage. In this stage, there is no splitting of glucose molecule. In this stage, glucose molecule is converted to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Donation of two phosphate groups from ATP in this phase. Step 1 is the phosphorylation of glucose. Step 2 is the conversion of glucose 6-phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate. Step 3 is the phosphorylation of fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1, 6, by, phosphate. Step 1 is the phosphorylation of glucose. Phosphorylation of glucose, to glucose, 6-phosphate, by enzyme glucokinase or hexokinase. One molecule of ATP, is utilized in this reaction to provide, its phosphate group to glucose, which is positioned at, carbon number 6. One ATP is utilized for phosphorylation. ATP acts as phosphate donor. This step is the first irreversible step of glycolysis. This step can be reversed by glucose 6-phosphatase in gluconeogenesis. Glucose is freely permeable to liver cells. Insulin facilitates the uptake of glucose in skeletal muscles, cardiac muscle, diaphragm and adipose tissue. The reaction is catalyzed by the specific enzyme glucosidase in liver cells and by nonspecific hexokinase in liver and extrahepatic tissues. This reaction controls the rate of glucose breakdown. Second step is the conversion of glucose 6-phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate. Conversion of glucose 6-phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate by the enzyme phosphohexose isomerase. This step is the reversible reaction. Third step is the phosphorylation of fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1,6-biphosphate. This step involves phosphorylation of fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1,6-biphosphate by the enzyme phosphofructokinase 1. One molecule of ATP is utilized in this reaction to provide its phosphate group to fructose 6-phosphate, which is positioned at carbon number 1. One ATP is utilized for phosphorylation. In this step, ATP acts as phosphate donor. This step is the second irreversible step of glycolysis. This step can be reversed by fructose 1,6-biphosphatase in gluconeogenesis. This step is the rate-limiting step of glycolysis. What is phosphofructokinase 1? Phosphofructokinase 1 is the key enzyme in glycolysis, which regulates the breakdown of glucose. At this stage, glucose oxidation does not yield any useful energy, rather, there is expenditure of two ATP molecules for two phosphorylations. Stage 2 of glycolysis is the splitting phase. In this stage, there is splitting of fructose 1,6-biphosphate to 2-triose phosphates. This stage only consists of one step. Step 1 is the splitting of fructose 1,6-biphosphate to 2-triose phosphates. This step involves splitting of fructose 1,6-biphosphate to 2-triose phosphates by the enzyme, aldolase. These two trioses are, an aldotriose, glyceraldehyde, 3, phosphate, and one ketotriose, dihydroxyacetone phosphate. After splitting, the pathway, will run twice, because, dihydroxyacetone phosphate is also converted to, 3, phosphoglycerate. This reaction is reversible. Each of these two, above mentioned, trioses, produces 1-NADH2, in aerobic glycolysis, through respiratory chain, so two trioses, will produce, 
two NADH2, ultimately, six ADPs. Respiratory chain stops, in the absence of oxygen. Therefore, the NADH2, produced in anaerobic glycolysis, cannot give, three ATPs, instead, it reduces, pyruvate to lactate. Each of these two trioses, above mentioned, trioses, produces, two ATPs, at substrate level, in next coming reaction. Therefore, two trioses, will produce, four ATPs, at substrate level. Each of these two trioses, above mentioned, trioses produces, one pyruvate. Therefore, two trioses will produce, two pyruvates. Or, we can say that, one glucose molecule, produces, two pyruvate molecules. Thank <laughs> you.